But let's look at what exactly happened at Chernobyl on April the 26th, 1986. The lead up to the explosion actually started 24 hours earlier. The sequence of events started when the Russians began to shut down their reactor in preparation for an experiment, a test which was ironically aimed at improving the overall safety of the reactor. The idea was to disconnect one of the turbines from the reactor and find out if it was possible to use the energy from it as it slowed down to power some pumps which were part of the reactor's emergency cooling system. The Russians, of course, had been operating this type of reactor, known as an RBMK-1000, for some 20 years. In their official report, they admit that there were significant violations in the operating rules for the power station on this occasion. But in Vienna, they also acknowledged it had basic design faults. In their discussions with international experts, the Russians confirmed that their operators placed the reactor in an unstable condition and that the design placed too much responsibility on the operator's shoulders. So let's look at what happened in greater detail. The experiment which the Russians hoped to carry out should have been no more than a one-off, tried just once as the reactor shut down and lasting about 45 seconds. But in case it didn't work first time, it was decided to keep the reactor working at a reduced level. The operators planned to reduce the level from 3,200 megawatts to around 700 megawatts and keep it there so that they could repeat the experiment if necessary. Unfortunately, the operator in charge failed to set the controller, the thermostat if you like, at 700 and the level dropped to 30. This set the scene for disaster. It's forbidden to operate an RBMK at lower than 700 megawatts because the design limitations make the reactor unstable and potentially dangerous at a lower power level. Determined to press ahead with their experiment, the men in the control room sought to bring the reactor back up to power again, but it was very difficult. They got the heat output back up to 200, but couldn't get it higher. Even to get that far, they had to switch off vital safety systems and deliberately withdraw many of the control rods. Control rods are designed to descend automatically into the reactor core to shut down the nuclear reaction in the event of a fault developing. Unfortunately, prior to the accident, the operators at Chernobyl withdrew too many rods and they withdrew them too far, in fact, beyond the design limits. Unlike in British reactors, they were unable to insert them again fast enough when things started to go wildly wrong. The RBMK-1000 was not a reactor designed to cope automatically with operator error, as is the case with CEGB reactors. The Mark 1000 was a development of the very first Russian nuclear power reactor, which started operating at Obninsk as long ago as 1954. Nothing like it exists outside the Soviet Union. In fact, for that very reason, one of Russia's top nuclear scientists, academician Valery Legasov, has since stated publicly that an accident like the one which happened at Chernobyl would not be possible at any other reactor in the world. The reactor had two fundamental design flaws, and these were of vital importance that day, namely what physicists call a positive void coefficient and a positive power coefficient. An RBMK-1000 produces steam for its turbines by boiling water actually in the reactor using heat from the fuel elements. The same water circuit also cools the reactor. The water is pumped under pressure around 1661 tubes made of an alloy of the metal zirconium situated in the graphite core. In any water reactor, the amount of steam affects the tempo of the nuclear reaction. In the RBMK, an increase in steam increases the tempo, which in turn leads to more steam. Under normal operating conditions, this can be coped with by complex control systems. But at low power, and 200 megawatts was low power, the second phenomenon, the positive power coefficient, can occur. That's to say, more steam leads to more power, more steam, more power, and so on. In fact, a runaway situation. Without enough control rods in place, without any effective automatic shutdown systems operating, 
the Chernobyl reactor went on surging with power. Some of the uranium fuel disintegrated. Steam explosions occurred, bursting open the zirconium tubes. The flimsy structure around the graphite core couldn't contain the build-up in pressure, and the reactor literally blew its top. It didn't explode like an atom bomb. It's physically impossible for any reactor to do that. But the energy created was enough to throw a 1,000-ton concrete slab above the reactor to one side. Several fires broke out. The rest is history. The Russians have been remarkably frank about what happened at Chernobyl, admitting at the Vienna conference that the design of the RBM K-1000 placed too much responsibility on the operator's shoulders. They shut down 11 similar reactors for major modifications. The plain fact is that if the RBMK design had been right in the first place, the accident wouldn't, indeed couldn't, have happened.